We've got a great one for you Mopar fans on Muscle Car of the Week. This time, a 69 Roadrunner A12 car with some very cool history. Cars like this Roadrunner, I think, are super cool because a base Roadrunner was basically just kind of a boxy, fairly big car. Uh, but when you started to check the right option boxes, you could build a drag racing hero right out of the factory. And that's what this one was. It's very obvious looking at this car that it is much nicer now than it was when it rolled off the assembly line back in 69. But one thing that is hard to improve upon is a 446 pack under the hood. This car came equipped with what's called the A12 package. And the A12 got you the 446 pack V8 engine, made 390 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque. This one's got a uh, four-speed manual transmission and a few other cool things like a lift-off fiberglass hood with fresh air induction, uh, a Dana 60 rear end with uh, a sure grip differential, 410 gears, and stamped steel wheels that are painted black. Uh, the A12 option didn't offer any other wheels. You could only get the black steel wheels. And it's got a bench seat and a tachometer is one of the few options in the dash. And when you put all those together, you end up with a car that was capable of running mid 13 second quarter miles from day one. But this one is even cooler because this is the very first A12 car ever built. And it's a documented car. And in fact, it was the feature in a magazine called Superstock Magazine back in 1969. The guys from Superstock obtained this car from Chrysler and hooked up with legendary speed shifting drag racer Ronnie Sox to do a magazine story, partially to test the car, but also to see if the magazine writers could shift and drive as fast as Ronnie Sox in the quarter mile, which nobody really thought they could. So the story goes, they did some minimal prep to this car basically took all the crap out of the trunk and the spare tire and everything, pumped the front tires up to 60 PSI, put a new set of spark plugs in it, and started running down the strip. And it was good for low 13s. I think the, uh, the journalists ran 1324 at 110 miles an hour. Low 13s was extremely respectable for this car, but of course, Ronnie Sox was able to kick it up a few notches. He pulled the air filter element out and uh, immediately ran into the 12s, eventually running at 1291 at 111 miles an hour and was basically an all-stock car, even on bias ply, red line, you know, 1969 tires. I mean, this thing was a screamer. And the guys at that time suspected that by putting a set of headers and some slicks, this thing would be running low 12s all day long. So this very car is the one used in the magazine. So it's got this cool history. And to verify that, there's another piece of history that goes along with it, and it's a letter that was written by uh, an executive at Chrysler when they finally sold the car to its first owner, uh, R.E. Maxwell from the Performance Activities Division of, of Chrysler Corporation wrote Mr. Lester Willey this letter that said, uh, Dear Mr. Willey, uh, your Roadrunner, with the correct serial number that matches this one, uh, is the car featured in Superstock Magazine and it's uh, probably the fastest production six barrel ever built at the time. Uh, you're quite fortunate to own it and good luck at the drag strip. So whenever you have you know, cool documentation to go along with the car, it just adds a whole nother level you know, to the car. So the other things that are nice about this one, it's currently wearing a beautiful restoration. It's in its uh, performance red original color with the black vinyl interior. And the thing that was neat about the 440s is they made tons of power and they were a lot cheaper than the Hemis, but this thing could compete with it all day long. The view from the bench of this Roadrunner is pretty cool because there's not a lot going on in here either. It doesn't have a fancy pistol grip shifter on the four-speed handle. It doesn't have a fancy radio or air conditioning. It's got an AM, it's got a basic gauge pack, it's got a tack stuck in the corner but it does have the beep beep horn. It, it has a, a great history, it looks awesome, uh, it runs like crazy, so that's why we chose it to be this week's Muscle Car of the Week. And you can see more of it at our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. 
Remember, you can always check our Facebook page to get a sneak peek of what our next car is going to be. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.